Oh yeah, I made it back to the shop. Hey guys, and welcome back to the infamous project. Today, we're gonna to be talking about four cylinder Fox bodies and what their potential value is, my opinion, get maybe some of your comments and your feedback to see if this purchase that I just picked up the other day in your eyes is justified or not. Guys, we're here to look at a fox body. What's going on, man? You washed it all up and everything. I appreciate that. So here we are, a 93 notch. This is actually originally a four-cylinder car, and I'm gonna get into that later. He's just washed it up for me here, so let's have a look at this thing and see if we're gonna load this on the trailer. Look at that blue interior, guys. If you guys have been following me and know my channel, you know that I love me a blue interior. 93 blue, so it's all blue. Steering wheel, cluster cover, everything. So we gotta check in here for some rust. This car was originally a Florida car. Looks good. Yeah, so I guess it has been sprayed at some point. That's how it blew up? <clears throat> or a little nitrous? <laughs> uh, nah, that's that's a few line. It's just braided lines all the way to the back. Yeah. And then... Oh, they actually kept the factory force on their fuel lines just tucked away down there. Redone the trim and a few little things, huh? I think it needed a Just have to replace that one. Playing a scratch ticket. So it comes with it. Oh. Cross member, computer. Ooh, an Optima. Alright guys, so I'm going to load this thing up on the trailer. I gave it the quick hole once over here. I didn't go into too much details. You know, I don't want to get into people's private lives, but uh, we'll uh, have a full overview here shortly. So what do we have? We have here a 1993 LX Coupe white with a blue pinstripe on blue interior. Now, typically up here on this door panel, this section here would be black. This would normally be black, it's all blue. Your steering wheel would normally be black, it's blue. This cover is blue, the top of the dash is blue. Everything is blue. The only thing that they didn't make blue was the trim around the bezel here for your shifter. That is not blue, and the trim around the heater control is not blue. Now that headliner is minty fresh. This is, uh, I'm loving it. Absolutely loving it. Love it. So let's start talking about this 1993 four cylinder that was converted to a 5.0 car. Now this was on Marketplace in San Antonio. I forget which group or forum that I found it on and to be honest, I try and stay off Marketplace. Sometimes I can't help myself. I just happen to be cruising on there. And when I see a white notch, I have to stop and take a look. So surprisingly enough, you know, San Antonio, he was only about an hour and a half from me, which isn't too, too far. And it's a 93, so it's the last year of the Fox. And it had that blue interior. So I've been dying to do a white on blue Fox body. And when the interior is already blue, it's an easy excuse to say, I'm keeping that interior and I'm just gonna roll with it. So when I saw this car and he had it posted up for $5,500 firm, and I think that that's part of the discussion today is what is a four cylinder Fox body worth? 
I had the video not too long ago talking about the next investment car and I was arguing saying, well, the GT is the next best thing and you should be looking for good deals on the GTs. But with that said, I also mentioned that if I were to find a good deal on a coupe, I'm still gonna buy a coupe. So this is sort of the example of that. This car looks and presents very, very nice. It uh, originated in Florida. I did pull the Carfax on it. I want to say, and it's hard on Carfax with reported mileages sometimes, but it spent most of its life in Kissimmee, Florida. And then when it was brought over to Texas, it seems like somebody didn't know how to report mileage properly, but I think it's about 120,000 miles on the body. They reported it as 220 and it just didn't line up. But Regardless, it doesn't matter because we're talking about a rust-free, pretty clean, straight car here. That's the most important thing, trying to find a good rust-free base. Now, you guys are probably like, you paid $5,500 for a four-cylinder roller. Well, let's take a closer look at this car. Number one, clean and rust-free. Number two, the paint actually presents okay on this car. I think it's been resprayed and someone tried to clean up the trim it's okay it's not great but i've seen way worse so a lot of these guys that are selling four cylinder cars wherever they might be you know the body and the paint is usually it's not even presentable you could put a nice set of big chrome wheels on them and slam them down make them look cool as like a patina thing well a lot of the stuff i'm seeing online looks like this so needless to say this car looks great and I think once all done, there's just, I'm not going to have to do too much. I'm on the fence whether I'm going to respray the whole car. But anyways, now I'm just rambling. So getting into this car, is it worth 5,500 bucks? I didn't pay 5,500. I didn't get it for less than five. Let's just say I got it for somewhere in between there. And here are the justifications and I'll rhyme off everything that came with this car. And then you guys can decide for yourself if you think that this was a good deal or not. So, number one, five volt conversion. I could not tell you what the spindles are, but there are slotted rotors and an SN95 style caliper up front. That is there. I can't tell you if it's 94, 95. I can't tell you if it's 96 to 98 or whatever the offset is. We don't know, but it's five volt converted. Also five volt conversion in the rear. It is drum. So we don't have disc in the rear. That is the downfall, but it is an 8.8 .8 rear end in the back. I'm almost guaranteeing you that there's some sort of gear in the back there. I don't know what that gear is, but it's probably not gonna be stock, which is the most important thing. So we got a nice diff cover on the back. There might actually be a few other things underneath the car. We need to take a closer look at that. So on the inside here, now this isn't a black interior car, but it's a really nice blue interior car, which again, something that I wanted, so take that into account. We have the proper 50, 140 mile an hour cluster in here, so that's taken care of. We have an auto meter, oil pressure gauge, we got volts, and we got water with a little gauge pod in the center vents there. So we got some aftermarket gauges. We got the B&M style, you know, I'm assuming that that is a ratchet shifter style setup. So that's gonna be coming out because I'm most likely gonna be doing a five speed swap in here. So we have that in that kick panel down there. We have an A9P computer. So the computer is 450 and it's ready to go. We got an aluminum drive shaft, got an off-road H pipe with O2 sensors still in it. We got the cowl for the front, so all the body panels are with this car. Even have the drive shaft bolt sitting right there, nice and convenient. So go into the trunk here. So we got an Optima red top battery and a battery box in the trunk. Nice little added bonus. Got a dual electric fan set up with an aluminum shield. So that'll be able to go right on our radiator. We got our cross member here, which looks like it's missing the bushings, but that's not a huge deal. I have another one of those. And what do we have here? We have matching VINs 
across pretty much every body component of the car, which is another added bonus. All right, so welcome to the engine bay. And in the bay here, we have quite a bit of important things. The first being is that there is the proper 5.0 harness in this car already with the right connectors all plugged in to make sure that our cluster and everything works the way that it should. The interesting thing is they still used the old four cylinder vacuum tree. The one thing that's interesting is it actually still has a four cylinder brake booster. So that's gonna have to get swapped out. Uh, it does have an MSD blaster coil, a little ignition system over here, a high fire 6AL. We have our power steering pump is still here. So if we look down over here, we've actually got our oil filter housing relocated and uh, got ourselves a little bit of an oil cooler set up in here, which is kind of cool. This will probably come out and uh, be for sale because I'm not going to need it for what I need it for. It's got a 5.0 sway bar in it. Bonus, we all know how much I love me a sway bar. So that's there. Again, we have the proper wiring harness in here, which has the fuel pump relay. And uh, we have our wide open throttle relay there. Got our mass air meter connection here. The car's braided lines run all the way to the back for the fuel system. So that whole braided line setup is gonna come out. That'll be for sale. So we still have the factory four cylinder fuel lines way down there underneath the steering shaft. So I'll most likely rip those out. And what you'll see down here is we actually have QA1 tubular K member with control arms. And there's actually a coil over setup in here. And we have a set of convertible style poly mounts, which look like they're pretty much new. So we've got almost everything to really easily dump a nice drivetrain in this car. So there you go, you can see the QA1 control arms. We got our end links here and everything. Our O2 harness is there. Now if we look underneath the car, you can see we got uh, our bolt-in subframe connectors. So we might do a little bit better than this on the install of those, but that's fine. There's our catback exhaust sitting over there and we can see how nice and clean the underside of this car is. So this is our definition of a rust-free Fox. And in case you're wondering, the door jams are very clean as well. So there's no rust up in there. As you can see on the underside here, we can see got our rear sway bar. There's the differential cover I was talking about. So we can actually see we got some blue springs here. I'm not sure which springs those are. And we have some aftermarket lower control arms in the back here. So we definitely got some goodies. So there we have it for a close look at the underside of the car. Rust free. You know, we got some aftermarket springs, control arms, and there's probably gonna be some other goodies that we're gonna find with this car, which is the best part because I wasn't really expecting any of that when I first saw it. In fact, I didn't know there was an H-pipe and an aluminum drive shaft. It was sitting there on the ground when I went to go see the car. So those are all bonuses about this car that I'm pretty excited about. So like I was saying, all the VIN stickers match. This one's been painted. Might have to try my sanding trick on this one and see if uh, we can expose that and see if this is the factory front bumper cover. All right, guys, so there's the overview. Now, do you guys think that this car is worth five grand or 5,500 is asking price? He had quite a few guys in line for it. Actually, he said he had a guy in Indiana who was ready to just wire him money and was gonna send a truck down to pick up the car. Luckily, I got a hold of him first. So again, going back to one of our earlier questions, is a four-cylinder Fox worth converting? Now, in my opinion, when you got something this clean that's ticking off the boxes that you're looking for, so in my case, a white coupe with a blue interior, I think I'm ahead of the game because it's matching the original options. Now, there's nothing to say I couldn't put a blue interior in a black car and paint the black car white and do all those things, but that's just a lot more work and time and energy when everything that I need is pretty much here. Moreover, I have the 89 parts car sitting here that has a good drivetrain in a beat up, destroyed body. So I have a motor, I have a transmission, I have my clutch pedals, I have everything that I need out of this car that I can easily swap into this and I'm gonna have 
a really nice looking driving car for what it is. Now, am I gonna be 100% with this paint? So I gotta ask myself, is it worth stripping it down real quick, doing a little bit of the body work to prep and spraying it? I don't know. As a driver, as for somebody else who might want the car, maybe it's just best to leave it alone. I'll probably do a little bit of trim, touch up and resto on it. So funny enough, even these quarter windows are in pretty good shape. They've gone over them with something, with some sort of paint, but I can tell they didn't build up a whole bunch of material. You can see a little bit of the pits down here on the inner edges. So these are gonna be really easy to clean up, tidy up, restore, you know, scuff all this stuff down and paint it the proper satin black. I think that's the biggest thing that's just an eyesore to me is just that gloss black is just a little too shiny for my liking. Now, the other added bonus of this car, which is probably the first thing that you would have noticed, is the wheels and tires. So it came with a nice set of SVE. What are these? The 10th anniversary style wheels. And they look pretty good. The offset in the front's a little too aggressive for my liking. But hey, the wheels are gonna end up getting swapped. The suspension's gonna end up getting swapped. I think I'm actually going to put my tip prototype coilover set up in this car and see how those ride. So that'll be an interesting one to go over with you guys. So I didn't have a problem spending money on this car. Now, a lot of you guys would be like, oh, $2,500 max, maybe 3,500 and not 5,000. Well, the fact is the car was only an hour and a half away from me. So it was pretty local and it was a color combo that I wanted and everything else. So I think I am going to do okay with this deal. I'm more than happy to hear your guys' opinions on this. The reality is guys, as more and more time goes by, people are gonna start caring less and less about that one digit that denotes whether this was originally a four cylinder or an eight cylinder car. So I think in the next five years specifically, kind of that same timeline that I was talking to you guys about with the GTs being the next investment cars, people are just going to want clean Mustangs. And if they can't get the GT or they can't get a V8 notch, and these are kind of the first example of people going after, with actually the exception of the four eyes. Sorry, I'll rewind. So the four eyes have actually done quite well at not being original V8 cars and getting swapped. And I think the aero cars are soon to follow with that, especially the coupes, because the coupe market is so hot and the supply is drying up to find clean ones that people will go after one of these and they won't care. A lot of people have gone over all the reasons why to use a four cylinder car. You know, they were probably owned by someone who didn't beat on them and didn't drive them as hard and et cetera, et cetera. They're tighter, they're not twisted, this and that. The reality is most four cylinder cars were used as dailies. They would have been driven just as much, if not more, maybe in the winter. So a clean four cylinder is potentially harder to find, but they are out there, this being the example. And if you can make the four cylinder into what you really want, who cares how it started its life out? The end result is what's most important and people are starting to see that now and they are just going to continue to see that. When you see the old 60s Mustangs that are fully built and restored, a lot of those cars weren't originally V8 cars. So take that as the example or the analogy, if you will. And I'm just going to end this video right here and saying, I think I got a great buy with this one. So I'm really happy to have added another white coupe to the stable because all of these black notches in 2020 and 2021, they're really starting to get to me. So excited for this one. Be sure to stay tuned for more on what's going to happen with this car and how this guy is going to donate life over here. So there you have it. Let me know what you guys think of the four cylinder market. And if you think that this was a good deal or if I should have walked away and not even considered it, let me know what you think the future market of the four cylinder cars is gonna look like. Cause I think we've already seen some of it with the four eyes. A lot of the four eye cars, whether they were the 3.8 V6s, I think there was a few inline sixes and then some four cylinder cars. A lot of those have been really good bases and canvases for people to convert over to V8. I've already done the four to eight swap earlier in 2021 that came out great because the car was so clean and in fact that one had a blue interior as well so with that said look forward to hearing your guys's comments until next time thank you again for your support and we'll see you soon